Oh my gosh, you guys, I have tried to do this introduction like five times already, and I just can't, I can't get it right. Lisa here from the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast, and it is officially Christmas week. I think. Yeah, it is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so hi, I'm Lisa. This is the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. Hey guys, this is take like 3,482 of um, me trying to figure out how to introduce myself <laughs> for my podcast. So, hi, welcome. This is a podcast about knitting and sometimes spinning. Not today, spinning. I have not spun a thing this week, again. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna sit here for about an hour, tops maybe a little bit less, um, and talk to you guys about what I'm knitting on. So, all right, if you're new here, you may not have any idea that I've never recorded in this room before, but everybody who has been with me since episode one will notice that I have a different setup today, and I am in my six-year-old son's bedroom because we got a lot of snow. We got a whole bunch of snow yesterday, and... So it is a snow day today, and I'm thinking podcasting outside tomorrow, probably not gonna happen. I, I really have been enjoying doing my recordings outside, but it is below freezing, officially below freezing temperatures out today. And as much as I wanted to, as beautiful as the sunlight is on the snow and all of that, I. Yeah, I, I just didn't think I could sit out there for an hour and and just just chit chat. So inside it is. Um, unfortunately, I don't live in a quiet house by myself. So I am kind of huddled here in my son's room trying to get some quiet and some decent light. Um, yeah, so we're just we're just going to go with this today and it, it's just going to be what it is. And we're going to be happy that it snowed because it's officially Christmas week. One week from today is Christmas. Oh my goodness. Are you guys ready? I'm like kind of mostly sort of a little bit ready. So I have lots of things. I've got lots to talk about actually not necessarily lots to show you but um yeah let's just let's just jump right into it with what i am wearing okay so anybody who spends like any amount of time on instagram should recognize this sweater so this is the betty and judy lodge sweater and yeah unless you've been living under a rock um the past like three years Every, every year around this time, if you follow a whole bunch of knitting pages, this sweater just jumps out at you because everybody, everybody knits it. And it's just a really fun Christmas sweater. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm going to have room to stand up and do like a full little demonstration of this sweater. Um, so most of the excitement is up here anyway. I will insert some pictures that I took um, a couple of years ago. I think this is two years now since I knit this. I think I finished it maybe by January 1st. I didn't quite get it done in time for Christmas. Um, but 
it was really, really fun to work on. Officially, my very first color work project was this sweater. So, yeah, um, let's see, I'll get like a little bit closer here. You can kind of see that there's this really cute puff sleeve uh, shoulder, puff shoulder detail right there. And that, the, so, all right, the construction of this sweater was so interesting. The first sweater I think that I knit that had such an interesting construction. Um, I don't remember exactly where it started, not with the neckband, because that actually happened like last, but it was with like, like some of the back pieces and the shoulder details were like some of the first, it was all made in one piece, right? So I think it was my first time ever doing a sweater that was like a one piece knit. So um, yeah, I don't have any idea how knitwear designers figure this shit out. No idea. Um, but they do, and I'm so glad that they do. You can kind of see this one, little puff sleeve. It is so adorable. Um, so it's like a vintage sweater, and it's just it, the holly up here, and the berries are like little baubles. They'll get you some like 3D detail. I'm wishing that I had knit the body a little bit longer. Here I go, because like, yeah. If I, can, if I can like hike up my pants there, then we get it over the, over the waistband. I definitely have to have high-waisted jeans to feel comfortable wearing this sweater. I think if I had knit it maybe like this long, I'd feel so much happier wearing it. But I mean, the fit is so cute. Um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to show you guys the full view. So, um, the other really cute thing is the little keyhole detail, button detail in the back. Um, and I don't remember what button is here. I can't see it, but it's just something that I found like in a bag of buttons that like my grandma had like, she had a whole bunch of craft, like a whole bunch, like so much craft stuff. And when she died, a lot of it came here. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was like a random button, but I found it and I used it for this sweater. And I just thought, um, that this would be a really fun sweater to wear for this episode since we are so close to Christmas. I wish that I could be filming in front of our Christmas tree, but there's just, there's just too much people, too many people, too much people, too much people. It's too people-y in the house right now, especially on that side of the house where said Christmas tree is still undergoing decoration. All right, so Betty and Judy Lodge sweater, super fun Christmas knit. I mean, look at um, even this little color work detail right here. I don't know where they like, it's kind of like that little flea stitch. And if you hear some noises um, like that right there, um, that is skunk. Skunk is Owen's guinea pig, and he's named Skunk because he's black with a white stripe. Um, yeah, I'll take some footage and insert a picture of Skunk here so that you can see him. But that is the noise that his water bottle makes. So every time he goes to drink his water, that little, that clicky sound is what you're gonna hear. All right, so finished objects. I have only one finished object, but it's, it's, it's like, it might be the funniest, most epic thing that I have finished in like a long time. Oh, sleeve detail. I should have showed you guys the sleeves. We'll get back to it. All right, super cute, right? Yeah, super cute. Anyway, all right, so my finished object, there is just one, and I, I'm not gonna lie, this last night, this was nowhere near finished, and I was like, I got a podcast tomorrow, and I don't have any finished objects, which is fine. I mean, like, finished objects, they're not gonna happen every week, 
but I've had like so many little small tiny projects that it was kind of ridiculous that I didn't have anything finished and I needed a break from the big epic project that is Owen's Christmas sweater. So I took a break yesterday from that and I finished my O Tannenbaum hat. This thing is hilarious and I am just so pleased. <laughs> I am so pleased with this thing. I kind of want to keep this for myself. I'm going to put it on, but I think I'm going to need to adjust the camera up a little bit. Um, oh my gosh. If Owen won't wear this, I am going to totally steal this thing. I haven't even tried it on since I finished it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This, this is hilarious. All right. <laughs> this is, how can you be sad? I'm going to raise this up a little bit more. How can you be sad with this thing on your head? Like if anything's going to get you in a holly jolly spirit, oh my goodness. I've got to go outside after this and, um, after I record and get my husband to take some pictures of me in it. But then I'm going to give it to Owen. He has no idea that I was making him a Christmas hat. And I don't think I'm going to save it for Christmas because it, it's just too fun. So this hat, yesterday it had nothing on it. It was still just a green like triangle. All right, so the hat comes with instructions for this little star topper, which is so cute, right? So cute. Um, and the camera is blowing it out. And then basically, basically, um, so it's an old Tannenbaum pattern and it is by Anna Montgomery. Um, so basically she just says, trim the tree, decorate it, like, Go look in your stash, look at you know, like whatever you can find. Of course, I had nothing fun in my stash um, because I don't normally knit like oddball Christmas tree hats like this. I don't know. Um, so I don't know. I just I was kind of sitting on it for like the last two episodes just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. All right, so I did this star last night and then I knit this garland. I'm gonna show you what I used to knit it. Um, all right, pardon the noise. Got a little bag. All right, so when I was at Michael's looking for things, I picked up this thing of yarn that looked so scratchy, but I thought, you know, maybe, maybe this would work for the tinsel and it totally does. It totally works. Um, all right. It feels really scratchy here. It feels actually really soft. It is surprisingly soft. Um, yeah. So I knit like a eye cord, super long eye cord. Um, I actually, I thought it was long enough and then I kind of ran out. And so then I knit like another piece and then attached it. Um, so this is Red Heart, and there is a really big glare. There we go. And it is um, Scrubby Sparkle, and this is the color. Do, 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 do. Where's the color? I think it is called Strawberry. Yes, it is Strawberry 431. So, um... Yeah, I bought this in like a few different colors, like white and green and yellow. I think I showed you guys last week and I'm really glad I chose the red because I don't think the other colors would have been as fun. Okay, and then right before filming, I, um, I sewed on these lights and I love how I decided to do it because I carried um, the embroidery floss. So I was like, all right, First, I was just going to attach them in like random spots on the on the hat. But then I was like, well, that looks kind of weird because that's not how Christmas lights are. 
that's not all how Christmas lights are. So I said, you know, what if I actually just carry the yarn across the front instead of the back, instead of the inside on the wrong side, and then it will look like um, like the string of Christmas lights, like going around the tree. So my only regret is that these don't actually light up because that would just be the best. It would be the best. Um, yeah, so I found these. I'm gonna dig those out too. Um, I think they're right in here too. I was searching, I was searching all over the place for like ornaments, like buttons or ornaments or like something to like put on this and decorate this tree. And finally, like I looked at like three different places and finally I went to Joann's and they had, all right, so this ring light, like there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get used to that. I'm used to like coming right up to the camera. All right, um, yeah, so they had these cute little light charms, like Christmas bulbs um, at Joann's. And so I still have like one and a little bit, like maybe one and a third packages left. So I'm like, like 13 or 14, cause there's only 10 in a pack. I bought five because it was a buy three, get two free. And this was like a week ago at Joann's. Um, so yeah, so I used like almost four packs of these. So that would be like maybe 35, 36 lights. <laughs> this hat makes me ridiculously happy. So I think anytime I'm starting to feel like Grinchy, because that's bound to happen because it, it's just bound to happen that I feel a little bit Grinchy. Um, I <laughs> try to remember to put this hat on. Um, so yeah, so it's my only finished object, but it's a pretty fun, it's a pretty fun finished object. All right, so whips. All right, so basically, I mean, I've got one big whip that has been like monogamous. I have basically been a monogamous knitter this week, but I have found little pockets of time to get a little bit of knitting done. So the other day, so my my poor kitty has, um, her eye has been really like drippy and puffy and swollen for like the past like week. And so, and it wasn't getting better. So um, on Tuesday I called, of course our regular vet was closed. So I ended up taking her to the emergency vet. And this is my, my pretty kitty. She's got like the most beautiful eyes. And And so her eye is just all like, ugh, she's like, she's a calico and she's the sweetest thing. But, um, so I took her up to the emergency vet and the way that they're, the way that they're operating right now with COVID and everything is that you go up there and you call from your car and, you know, they take all your information on the phone and then you sit there and you wait for them to have an opening. It's an emergency vet, so you can't make an appointment. It's just like, you take your chances. Um, and I knew that we were gonna get a lot of snow on Wednesday. So I was like, all right, let me, let me definitely, I don't wanna wait until the vet is gonna be open on Wednesday because Owen's got a dentist appointment. It's gonna snow, like it's, it's just gonna be a mess. So I took her up to the emergency vet and it turns out that she's got corneal ulcer so she's got like a big laceration on her cornea i have no idea how it happened um every once in a while my other my big cat samson and her will just they get along so well but every once in a while they'll get into like a little kitty scuffle and so i'm just i'm just wondering if that one of those times like maybe he got her in the eye i don't know i have no idea but apparently it's like a 10 millimeter long like gash that she's got like right on her eye and oh my gosh so that was expensive and I just I feel so bad for her because she's like she's in so much pain so anyway so while I was at the vet I was like all right well I'm not gonna bring Owen's sweater because that's like a lot to think about so I just needed um just you know a mindless knit and so 
I didn't get a lot done, but I did get the ribbing done on sock number two. So this was sock number one. Owen really wanted rainbow sparkly socks just like mine. Um, I talked about these last week, but this is Knitterly Things, um, and it was from the January Sock Yarn Club 2018 paint box, I think is what it's called. So I've got the ribbing done. So I, I don't know if these will get done by Christmas. Um, I have that sweater is, is the thing. So we'll get to the sweater. The sweater is like everything this week. All right, so that's one whip. Other thing that I've been working on for like three episodes is Santa. And so Santa was a kit that I got in like a magazine at like Barnes and Noble last year. And so I didn't knit them up last year. So I said, you know, I'm just like trying to go through things that I have. So I said, okay, I'm going to make Santa. Well, I've knit all of Santa's body parts. I've got like a Santa explosion of random. Yeah. I've got what's going to turn into a body. We've got Let's see, we got some arms. I've showed you guys this part so far. We got some boots. Um, so, well, there's so many ends. Where can I show you? There we go, boots. And last time I had done the head. All right, so this week I made the hat. So thank goodness I do not have to knit with this <laughs> awful. <laughs> yarn. No idea what it is other than a nightmare. Hate knitting with it. But all right, so that's done. It's very sparkly. Um, and then I made, um, where is everything? I lost his nose. There's like a little nose here somewhere. I know that took like two seconds to knit, but so I've got a beard and I've got a mustache. So this thing's going to get like wrapped around like in the middle and then that's gonna be like a mustache yeah um, and then somewhere in here is a nose I don't know oh here it is this random little little nose Santa is is in a thousand pieces but all of the pieces are now made they're all knit so now, basically, all I have to do is sew and stuff and sew and stuff and sew and stuff and fill Santa's body up with fluff. Yep, so I've still got a week to get Santa made before Christmas. So, all right, so that's that whip. So nine days ago, Owen came home from school and it was Wednesday and he has art class on Wednesday. And in his first grade art class, they were given a blank sweater to draw, um, to color and design like a Christmas sweater. And so he came home from school and, you know, most kids will just be like, oh, here, this is what I did in art class. End of story, right? No, my child gives this to me and says, you need to make this for me. So I got, I got an assignment a big, big fat assignment from my child. It's really fun, actually. I am, I am like having, I'm having the best time working on this for him. All right, so it has been nine days. Last week I showed you guys I had like this much done of a sleeve. Wait for it. I have all of this oh my goodness i can actually put this thing on over my head all right i still have yarn attached to it i will tell you why so check this out guys oh my goodness all right it fits him i mean it's not seamed up yet obviously but yeah so look at how cute this is this little sweater <laughs> oh my goodness i Where's my picture? Here's my picture. Look. 
I, I am making this happen, like exactly, like I've got the blue right down in the middle. I am so proud of myself. All right, so I've never designed anything in my life. Everything that I have knit ever, I have had a pattern for. So I was like, all right, how am I gonna do this? So if you saw my episode last week, you already knew that this is what I was planning to do. Like I looked at his picture and I decided that basically what I did is I cast on over here. So what I did was a provisional cast on because if you look at um, how he did the cuffs and the ribbing, it's two colors. It's not just like one color ribbing, no. No, that would be too easy, mom. So <laughs> what I'm planning to do, and the reason why I did a provisional cast on is so that I could figure it out later. <laughs> so um, what I think that I'm planning to do, and I'm gonna try to start on this part tonight, is to do like some kind of two color brioche ribbing. I've never done brioche stitch before. I've never done two color brioche. I've never done one color brioche. This, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can figure out how to do it with some good YouTube tutorials. And I think that I have that like one brioche book. Um, so that's my plan. So what I figured was that, all right, I can knit these vertical stripes horizontally and I'm gonna knit the thing in one piece. And then all I needed to figure out how to do was how to how to do the neck hole like how many stitches so and then i yeah so i i am so proud of myself for this i i am so proud of myself i must look ridiculous but i don't even know what other <laughs> way to show this to you guys yeah i did this all on my own with math I'm gonna show you, like, I referenced a couple of things, and I'm gonna show you what I did. Um, so, all right, the most recent sweater that I had finished for Owen was his newt sweater, and this is a pattern by Martin Story. But, um, so I referenced this as, like, my starting point. So, the way that this sweater was constructed was in pieces. So that means that the sleeve was knit flat and then I, you know, I seamed it up. So um, what I did was I just, I referenced like approximately how many stitches I needed to cast on and then like how to space the increases to get to like the final number of stitches. Um, and so I did that much. And then, um, so this is a raglan shape. So I couldn't, you know, that's not the same type of sweater design that this one is. So I really, I used that pattern. I used this just for like how to figure out like my starting point for stitches for the sleeves and the increases so that I knew like where I needed to end up. Okay, so I did that and then, um, what I did was I just, I kept holding it up to him. Um, I knew that I wasn't doing a raglan shape so that I knew that I was gonna just have to do like basically the front and the back and like cast on more stitches at a point. So I kept holding it up to him until, um, until I knew that it was gonna be long enough of a sleeve with just a little bit of room for the cuff at the end and I mean, I am so proud of how I did this. I'm just, because I'm not a designer. I don't know how to do things. This is all just experience of like knitting a whole bunch of different patterns from other people that I was able to like take bits and pieces of my knowledge and like plop them all together into, into this. So um, I held it up to him and I then I, I figured out where I wanted to connect the body here 
Um, all right, I'm so proud of how I did this because I did kind of like halfway through the orange strip like that. So like it's like part just sleeve and then this is going to be under his armpit is going to be the orange stripe down like the side seam. Now this is stuck in it so it is curling. Um, but you know when I when I stitch it together it's not going to curve. But so he's going to have like the orange stripe like down here and yeah and then it just so it like the pattern is just it's really totally seamless in terms of like the stripe the striping on this all right so this is where like i had to start actually using math because i needed to figure out where and how to do this neck opening so um and i knew that i wanted to get that blue stripe right in the center he even did it like that in his drawing. It's like right in the center. I mean, if a six-year-old can put a stripe right in the center like that, then I better figure out how to line mine up right in the center. All right, so then the next thing that I did was I took this again, and I just, I just laid it out. And let me tell you the, the brilliance of knitting side to side is that you your row gauge all right so if anybody else wants to knit this like if i write up a pattern row gauge is going to be basically vital to sizing but because it's knit side to side i knew exactly how many rows i needed to knit the body and i i did it mathematically so that i i had exactly the amount of stripes and could get like that orange stripe on the other side halfway halfway done um yeah so all right so once i figured out how many rows my body needed to be then i started um like all right how am i gonna do this this neck this neck opening because i mean i didn't know um so what i did was i went to this pattern only to see um, like the total number of neckband stitches that I needed and so so I figured out that number and then um, you know I like divided it in half and then I figured out between like how many stitches I needed for the neck opening and how many rows I needed for the body, I figured out exactly where to place the center of the neck opening and this with the center of the body. And, and I did that. Then, so I, I was like so proud of myself. And then I was looking at my, my library of knitting books and I found this book on my shelf called One Piece Knits. And this is by Margaret Hubert. I didn't even realize that I had this book, but if you look at the um, at the cover, it says essential designs in multiple sizes and gauges for sweaters, knit top down, side over, and back to front. Okay, I was already halfway through knitting my sweater when I realized that I had this book. And so basically, like, it, it gives you instructions. There's a guinea pig. It's thirsty. Skunk's thirsty. Um, so I, I flipped to the section in here where, here we go, like side to side knitting. So there's like the classic side over sweater. And now I, I couldn't just take a pattern from here because, you know, she didn't have one in stock in that stitch, right? So she just kind of confirmed this was a confirmation for me that like so this is like an open front cardigan style and this is a pullover cycle so basically what this was was confirmation for me that i was doing everything exactly correctly um and so then what i did was basically this book is like just has a bunch of sizes and stitch counts and for like all different sizes there's for children there's for women and there's for men and like basic 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 sizes for like basic design sweaters um and the, but there's not like there's not patterns in here like this is basically 
a book to help design your own sweater. Perfect, right? So what I did was I went to the size uh, six, which is the size that Owen is, and I basically just went and looked at the stitch counts and I was so happy and so relieved to see that they were pretty much spot on to like my stitches, stitch counts, because I've been writing it all down, of course. Um, everything was pretty much spot on, like within a stitch or two difference, which is fine because that's, that's like basically the same. Um, like her sketch in here does not do any like fussy like sleeve increases. It's like just like a block. So it like it didn't have like any of that information or anything. It really just had like those final stitch counts that I needed. Um, and it was it was just awesome for me to have like confirmation that I was going about this not only in a way that was correct in terms of like how to construct this sweater, but that my stitch counts were so spot on without even referencing this just from doing math math is magic y'all math is magic i haven't really done this much math in like i don't even know how long but i was not scared of it i just i knew i needed to do it other you know in order to accomplish this for him so yeah um i recommend this book like this um you know, for this stage and what I'm doing with his sweater, I didn't need this book much, at, if at all. I was already completely on the right track. But this is going to be a handy, a handy thing. If I decide to make a pattern out of this sweater, I'm going to need to grade it to like a thousand different sizes. I can't just be like, well, here's the sweater for Owen's size. So if you have a six-year-old kid or a kid that wears size six clothes, like, you're going to be fine. But, you know, I need to make it smaller. I need to make it bigger. And, you know, and I'm going to need to know without having a sweater in that size handy to, like, measure it up against and a child that size. I'm going to need to be able to figure out what the size of all of those sweaters should be and stitch counts and, and all of that. So, so this book is going to be super handy for that. So I'm so glad I have this. So glad that when I go shopping and I find interesting knitting books that I buy them because then when I need them, they are there. So hoard all the knitting books. Okay. So since I was working on the Christmas tree hat yesterday, I went ahead and started working out some of the Christmas tree details for Owen's sweater. I made this cute little tiny star and it was the same exact star for the Christmas tree hat. I just knit it in fingering weight yarn on size one needles instead of worsted weight yarn. Um, and so this is just some sock yarn that I had left over from my husband's Charlie Brown socks. Um, so I made a, another little star, which was super cute. And then um, oh, I forgot to write down. I actually, I actually bought a little pattern for the Christmas tree last night. I went and searched on Ravelry for like all Christmas trees and, um, I just wanted something reliable that kind of was really close to what he was asking for on his sweater. So I will insert um, the name. I totally forgot about that in my show notes, but I made this cute little garter stitch Christmas tree. And so that is going to have, um, you know, the little star on it. And then I, you know, I have like 14 or 15 Christmas lights left over and I'll probably decorate the tree with the same little Christmas lights as, um, I used for his hat. So these details are, are done or like well on their way to being done. I do need confirmation from Owen. You can't really see them well, but he drew, he pointed out this present here that he drew, but then like it kind of looks like he drew another one over here. So I just, I want confirmation from him that 
there should be two presents under this Christmas tree. And then, so I still have the presents to do. But basically, I am so far along in this sweater. Nine days ago, I had no idea I was gonna be making this. And all that I need to do, so I left this on the needles um, over here because I'm going to try to do the brioche stitch cuff in the round before I do the seaming. You know, I've considered blocking it first because of how much the stockinette rolls, but I don't think I'm really going to need to block it. Basically blocking it, it will just make it maybe a little bit easier to sew, but I know that I know that I'll be able to do that stitching. I just I don't really want to take two full days to block it and wait for it to dry. Um, I am on a deadline here. So yeah, so I think I'm just going to wing it. But basically what I'm going to do tonight is try to figure out this brioche ribbing, starting with this cuff, and then I'll do I'll do the other one, take out my provisional cast on. Um, and then I will do the the side seams and I will have to pick up stitches to do the ribbing um, the brioche ribbing at the neckline and then also just at the hem so and then sew on all the little details and then this kid is going to have his Christmas sweater I thought that Christmas Day was gonna be my deadline with this sweater and then a few days ago I found out that um, on Tuesday, so today is Friday, so Tuesday is holiday sweater, ugly or not, day at his elementary school. So I have to have this thing completely finished by Monday. So I, I am so glad that I busted my butt all week long to get this thing to the stage that it is now because I, f I feel like I can, I can accomplish the ribbing and the seaming this weekend and get it done by Monday. So I think I'm also gonna take pictures of him wearing this sweater before I add the Christmas tree and presents to it because if I do turn this into a pattern, um, you know, I wanna be able to show just like the basic like vertical stripe pullover with the ribbing. Not necessarily that it has to be like a Christmas design or anything like that. So, yeah, so that is the status of Owen's fun Christmas sweater. <laughs> um, I'm going to pause this because he is, like, getting off the bus now. And I think what I'm going to do is, um, he's probably going to play in the snow. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this and come back to you guys in a little bit. And... I want to get some pictures of that hat both on my head and on Owen before it gets dark. So I'm gonna do that and then um, hopefully he'll stay outside playing for another half hour and I can just finish up. I probably have like 15 minutes more that I want to record. Yeah so I'm gonna take a break and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay. Oh my goodness, you guys, the hat on Owen, it, it's the cutest, the absolute cutest, most adorable thing in like the whole entire world. We just went out and took some pictures. He's out there playing right now, so I need to, um, to finish up here. Um, yeah, because my, my husband's out there and it's getting dark, and so they're not going to be out there too long playing, but oh my gosh, he's got this big Christmas tree on his head. And, oh my gosh, it, that just made me so ridiculously happy. Okay, so speaking of what makes me happy, um, hats on my child. All right, so last year I made him this little um, this little Santa hat. It is so cute on him too. I mean, I'll put it on me. I'm sure it doesn't look nearly as cute. Um, oh, it fits me like really well. But um, let me raise this up a little bit. <laughs> So this hat on Owen is like the cutest thing. Santa just like flops all around and he just runs around and outside playing in the snow. 
and, and Santa just just flops. So I thought, you know, I was like just grabbing things for this for this episode for this podcast, and I saw this because um, he wore this outside yesterday to play in the snow, and yeah, so I just I just grabbed it just because I'm showing all the Christmas things. So I figured, um, just in case any of you guys need like a really simple, really cute hat for a kid. This is so cute. And then, um, like I always tell you guys, what I do is I take like the last little bit that I have left over from his hat and I like, I split it up between the two mittens and then I, I just kind of um, use some scrap yarn like for the black to make the rest of his hat uh, from, the, from his hat. And then I just took like some random red yarn and just knit um, some mittens so that he had a little set. Um, so it works out really well to do it that way. There's always like just a little bit extra from the hat to like add that little detail to the mittens. So I guess actually now we're totally in the knit worthy section. Um, and basically, basically what's going on in the knit worthy section today is everything that I already talked about because that Christmas sweater for Owen is, yeah, that's like his big thing, but that's in the whip section. Um, so since I grabbed the Santa hat, that's totally a knit worthy thing. That's a finished object from a year ago. Um, basically yesterday we played in the snow. And so all of our hats and mittens that had gotten wet from playing in the snow were like hanging in the bathroom drying. And so I saw my husband's mittens in there and I, said you know what I should show those off because I'm never gonna remember to bring them out again and they were just sitting there so um, these mittens were a birthday gift for him last year and let me hold it up here I don't know if you can tell but that is all beer so these are um, mittens with pints on is the name of the pattern and I will pop that in here and the designer is Spilly Jane. Um, and so these are pretty big on me, obviously, because my husband has big hands. But um, these were the first color work, actually they're the only color work mittens that I've ever done. I have, I have plans in my head to knit like 15 more pairs of color work mittens. I have yarn to do it. I have patterns picked out that I want to knit, just none of them have happened yet. Um, like last year for Christmas, I asked for like three different mitten books, like sell blue mittens and a couple other mitten books because I really wanted to knit mittens and then I haven't, I haven't done anything yet. Um, so I should start knitting some mittens, but anyway, so these beer mittens, I knit these with Knit Picks palette yarn and I just, I've never knit with Knit Picks before but um that's what this particular pattern called for and i just i just went with it because the colors were perfect for all the different types of beer that one could drink and he really likes these he's actually like he's not at all a mitten person but he did dig these out and and he did wear wear them yesterday in the snow he he wore them He's got like a really nice pair of warm gloves, which I made him put on right now to go play in the snow because I wanted to show you guys this. And I said, I, I didn't finish with your mittens yet, so <laughs> you gotta grab your gloves. Otherwise he would be wearing these right now. But yeah, I'm really pleased. Like he wears these like out to the bus stop and just a little bit of shoveling. When he was shoveling though, he the nicer gloves have a little bit more of a grip. So this is kind of like when Owen begs us to go out and play in the snow, he'll, he'll put these on and yeah. So, um, this, let's see, this episode is going to be out on Sunday, which is going to leave you guys like four good knitting days before Christmas, really three. Um, but these mittens could totally be knit up in time for Christmas if you started like today. Um, otherwise don't stress but these are a really great like man pattern. If you've got a husband or a brother or a dad or any guy in your life who likes to drink beer, 
this is a great pattern. So I will have all the um, information for the pattern and all the other stuff in my show notes, which will be in the little um, description box below this video. So I'm trying to blow through this now because Owen is home, but actually that's like, that's everything. The only thing left is acquisitions. And I, I was really good. I didn't go and buy anything this week. <laughs> I didn't plan to have anything for the acquisition section today, but last week, if you guys remember, I was, I was pretty complainy about the USPS holding all of my yarn orders hostage in Michigan and Wisconsin. So, um, yeah, they, I, you know, I understand packages are going to take longer now and it's totally fine. I was, I was a little grumpy, um, about it though, because of one of the two packages was my sweater yarn for my test knit that I am doing the Noctuaday sweater for Catherine Clark of Brooklyn General. Um, so I am still waiting on that, but I am happy to say that my sweater yarn has been released from prison at the distribution center in Wisconsin and is on Long Island. So it is It is going to hopefully, it might have even been delivered to my post office today, but it's probably gonna take like a day or two for them to sort through it. So maybe tomorrow, maybe probably for sure on Monday, I will have my sweater yarn, which actually the timing of that is gonna be perfect because of it like, you know, it, it was like a blessing in disguise that I haven't been able to get started on this test knit because when Owen handed me that sweater to knit for him, I didn't have to feel like, oh my God, I should be working on this other sweater. I was like, okay, well, I don't have the yarn for the thing I'm supposed to be working on anyway. So I could like dedicate all my time to that. And it's gonna have to be done Monday so that he can wear it to school Tuesday. So hopefully I will actually have the yarn on Monday and can then get swatching. Of course, then it's Christmas. so. It might wait until like the weekend after Christmas happens, but by like a week from now, I will be swatching and knitting furiously on my test knit. So that hasn't arrived, but I do have my sock yarn from Michigan that had been held up. I should actually take it out of the packages to show you. All right, so first I'm gonna show you the yarn that I ordered. So, I do, um, I have been subscribed to Julia from Knitterly Things, Julia Vesper. Um, she has a sock yarn club and sometimes it's rainbow of the month. Um, sometimes it's just like a remix that she's done. And so I've been subscribed to her club for like the past two years. Cause I just, I really like rainbows. I really like stri stripes and, um, yeah, it's just, this is like all my vanilla sock knitting is basically done with like Julia's yarn. So um, she also released two Christmas colorways. And so I don't have a lot of Christmas colors. So I thought, you know, that I was going to get this at the beginning of the month and be able to maybe knit some Christmas socks. But at this point, um, maybe I'll get a nice cast on on Christmas Day. But this, all right. Where is the, the ring light really blows this out. Um, let's see if we can get this to focus at all. There we go. Um, so this is called Naughty and Nice. And so it's like this beautiful like red and um, like kind of like an aqua green speckly thing with like, I think it's like really thin stripes. And then she included this um, color. I don't, I don't know the name of that color of the heel and toe yarn, but so this one is super fun. And then the other one that I ordered for Christmas socks is called Holiday Magic. And that has like all of those fun striped colors in it. So um, yeah, so two like totally different colorways. Um, but both like equally fun. And the other one that I got 
was um, the two yarns that I get from being subscribed to her clubs. So whenever I order extra, she just ships it all together, which is, is totally fine with me. I am like never in a hurry to get it. I have enough sock yarn, especially <laughs> enough um, knitterly things sock yarn. Got them like kind of all blown out here um, from doing the close up there. Um, yeah, I have I have so much of her sock yarn. It's fantastic. But um, all right, so this is the November 2020 one, and um, so like she ships it at the end of the month, and then you get it like early the next month. So from the month of November, it finally came. Post office held it hostage. Um, and this one is called Gemstone Remix. And so this is those colors. It just doesn't want to focus on the label. So, but I think that you guys can see the colors well enough without me like clicking on it. So that's really fun. I mean, I'll try, let's see, get the, uh, there we go. So Gemstone Remix, just really, really pretty colors. And then the last one I got um, is her, um, just her regular sock yarn club. And this is called Drift Away. And this is also November color. So those are those. My husband really liked this one, especially. So this one might get knit into husband socks if he is lucky. So, all right, guys, that is everything that I have. Um, yeah, so thank you guys all for joining me today. I, I had so much fun just sharing all of my crazy Christmas projects with you. So speaking of Christmas, I, I always have been recording on Fridays. So the next two weeks, um, let's see, next Friday is Christmas Day. And so I don't know if I'm going to get any recording done on Christmas Day. But... Um, I'm going to try to still have some kind of podcast episode for you guys to watch um, next Sunday because um, I really don't want to skip a week. So I think, though, that um, it's not going to be like a normal episode. It might be something shorter. I haven't I haven't figured out yet. Maybe it'll be a sit in it. Um, something. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to try to have something going for you guys next weekend. Um, I just don't think I'm going to be recording on Christmas Day. And then the following Friday is New Year's Day. So I don't, I mean, we don't have any plans, but I don't, I don't know if there's going to be any recording of any normal episode happening as like on my normally scheduled program too. But I plan to have Maybe some kind of like 2020 wrap up episode and maybe some like hopeful knitting for 2021, a year in review, looking to the future, resolutions kinds of thing, probably for New Year's. They're back inside for playing in the snow. So um, yeah, Owen might bust in here at any second. So I'm gonna leave it at that and say just, um, thank you guys all for hanging out with me today. I really enjoyed just, just chit chatting and showing you all my projects. Um, if you have not already subscribed, that would be like the best Christmas present that you could possibly give to me. Um, I think we are at uh, just over 250 subscribers now. So for the 250 of you who have subscribed, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you. And for all of you who celebrate Christmas, I hope that you have the best Christmas. Merry Christmas. To everybody else, happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. I hope that you have an amazing time and do it safely and stay healthy. And yeah, that is it. I, as I said, I don't know what the next couple of episodes are going to look like, but I look forward to having something a little bit different here for you guys to enjoy as we wrap up 2020. So, um, that's all I've got. <laughs> okay. Bye everybody. Thank you.